Welcome to Season 2 of Let's Break Up, Toxic Workplace Stories. Join hosts Nicola and Gina as they tackle workplace toxicity head-on. Real-life stories, well-being, and standing against toxicity await you. Let's break up with toxic workplaces and create a revolution of positivity together. As a disclaimer, Nicola and Gina's opinions are solely their own and don't represent professional advice. It's just their perspective, so form your own conclusions. Heads up! This podcast may contain adult content and explicit language. So let's dive in and break up with toxic workplaces. Well, we have a new guest today. I'm very excited. (laughs) We tapped in because Gina has gone on vacation and we have slacked off this season and we totally forgot that we had another episode to record. So I have tapped in my amazing neighbor, Shannon. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, yeah, a little bit about myself. I don't know that I have a role in the Toxic Workplace Environment podcast communications, but I do find people humorous and funny. Uh, enjoy people interaction, interacting with people. Yeah, so I'm an optometrist. And we don't really tend to work in big companies. We tend to work in small companies. So we still have toxic environments, but not maybe not as exciting as some of the things you come across. I feel like your work environment, though, has been really positive. Like you've had really positive leaders, really positive mentors. You've had a really positive experience getting into your career. Yeah, I've had lots of really positive mentors, actually, the whole way through, even when the environment might not be the most inspiring there's always been somebody or a few people who you can take some gems away from who you learn from. But my work environment at the moment is really positive. The whole team's really great. So, yeah. Which is a total juxtaposition of the conversation we're going to have today. <laughs> yeah, let's read some of the comments. <laughs> so today what we're going to do is we are going to go through some of the glass door reviews of businesses. And I've been trolling, trawling the internet looking for some of the best uh, reviews I could find. But before we get started as well, I also had a question. Have you ever been to a Christmas party where someone has gotten so horrifically drunk? Like, have you ever been to any work Christmas parties where someone's gotten horrifically drunk? No, actually none of my work Christmas parties have ever had anyone drinking to a level that was inappropriate. Or maybe it was me. And that's why <laughs> And that's why I don't oh, I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> you have to ask my workmates. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Um, I know I fell in a Christmas tree once. That's spectacular. Someone had to pull me up by the feet. <laughs> they had to like drag me out of the Christmas tree. I think that helped my Christmas stealing, my Christmas decoration stealing issues. Um, but yeah. Oh, you could sneak something while you were in the tree. I, ah. Well, that was the reason I was in the tree. In you the wanted to talk about place. weddings and inappropriate wedding drunken mistakes. Hey, sure. those people work. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but it's not a work environment. No. Because <laughs> I always get worried at Christmas time that someone's going to just cause mayhem. And then just cause like some sort of inappropriate HR debacle. It probably does happen quite a bit. I'm sure that they often, like one of the local bars here advertises, uh, you've made a mistake. You you make so many mistakes in your Christmas party. Don't let the venue be one of them or something oh, like that. Yeah. yeah. So I guess, I guess it is quite common for people to be a bit inappropriate at their Christmas party because it's such a stressful time of year it's not surprising that people let let loose yeah let loose let their hair down maybe drink more than they planned on yeah yeah because we we had our work Christmas party last week um and there were definitely a couple of sourced individuals I wouldn't say to a point that I would I was concerned but there was a couple that had been sourcing Uh, it back no ours was very sedate and mature reserved God, yeah. maybe we should all become eye peoples I don't think it's all optometrists I think it's just the unique blend of people I work with yeah. so lucky jeez we go out we might go out for drinks at other times when there's maybe not the boss around and a little bit more relaxed then <laughs> gotta pick your time <laughs> fair enough all right so getting into our reviews all right would you like to read <laughs> the would you like to read the first one? This is for McDonald's. Please tell us what star McDonald's got. So this is a crew member who's worked for McDonald's. They have rated McDonald's as an employer with one star <laughs> out of five. One out of five. 
and has titled their comment depression job well, this is in new zealand too <laughs> oh no the pros the pros of this job is it's a clinical depression factory not worth that doesn't quite read grammatically clear but i'm guessing no, it's saying if you wanted to have depression it. it's a great place to go to get depression the cons death pain suffering exhaustion yikes oh that's and what their advice their advice to the management so this staff member thinks the management their advice is to close that particular mcdonald's i'm curious now what is happening in the dunedin otago mcdonald's well if it's the one on the main street george street i think it's the main street um it used to be a very popular hangout as a student and the last time i went would have been about eight years ago and it was they were trying very hard to keep it clean but it was horrible it was where all the people who were kind of underage but how drunk go oh yeah. our christmas party goers but for not work reasons yeah. but for party reasons all right what have we got next this is all McDonald's. This is all McDonald's at the minute. All this year. Oh, wow. That's a bit sad. Um, oh, boy. Okay. Here we go. Hit, this, hit us up with this one. So this crew member <laughs> has also rated their employer McDonald's with one out of five stars. The pros to working at this particular branch, it's an Auckland branch, uh, none, 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 none. Oh, and another none. And the okay. cons are everything, 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 everything. And another everything. Oh dear. Oh no. And his advice, or his, <laughs> interesting how I assume it's male, uh, this crew member's advice to management is to quit. Oh, yikes. That is, it's a bit depressing though. It's a bit concerning that this is what's happening at McDonald's just in New Zealand. I've never worked in McDonald's. Um, mm -hmm. I can see, I could see it would be quite stressful. There's a lot of pressure, time pressure to get things. Oh, for sure. Um, Don't they have like a 30 second window that you can deliver stuff on i'm not sure i'm not sure but um if it's a, an environment like the dunedin one when there were so many drunken people it would it would not be satisfying at all i'm yeah. sure you give your order to people and they go that's not what i ordered well that and the fact that everybody loves a nuggy and if you're not getting your nuggy then who oh, are yeah. you who are you all right let's have a look what we have in here can we, not, can we can't give a positive one? Can we find a positive one for we, McDonald's to, you know, even it out? Oh, sure, we can. This find. is why my work environment's so good. We balance the negative oh, with the my positive. Lord, <laughs> who? Okay, we're going to go with the highest rating. All right, let's, let's not say it's also one out of five. <laughs> the highest rating is one out of five. But no, it it's a five. five. Okay, let's have a look. Um, let's find one. I here we go. Okay, so this is a shift supervisor. Mm -hmm. So was the other five stars. So obviously once you get higher up the ranks, it's a better environment to work in. The pros are many hours available for me to work. So if you're a workaholic, you can get lots of hours. Cons, I couldn't change my shift schedule. Hmm. hmm. Okay. Maybe there's, oh, here we go. Ah, so this is one of the chefs at McDonald's. Five stars. Can you call them chefs? Short order cooks. You know what? How about a Lego builder? Oh, yeah, yeah. Edible Lego, edible Lego builder. That's got a nice ring to it. Yeah. Pros, food is good and staff are nice. Cons, <laughs> I ate too much at times. <laughs> I love how he's, he, uh, why are we calling them he's? I don't Who knows? Know. Um, I love how they have referred to it as a buzzy place. Or is it a misspelling and they mean busy place? Mm, Touche. Food is good and staff are oh, nice. Oh, boy. Possibly. This this might be one of my tops. Here's a five star for you. Yeah, so this cashier says this was the title's their comment, best week of my life. Does that mean they only stayed there for a week and they gave them a five star rating? Uh, the pros are discounts on burgers and the other pro is the smell of burgers. <laughs> <laughs> the cons though are people get mad at burger. Nothing, just doesn't say anything. People get mad at burger. <laughs> advice to management nothing i love burger i feel like it's talking to cookie monster i, I love, love burger, burger. People, people get mad at burger monster <laughs> okay what have we got here let's a uh, finance manager i feel like we need to find out here we go crew member oh yeah nice working environment good benefits cons can be busy at times and sometimes needs a lot of cleaning that seems reasonable. Seems like a reasonable review. Um, anonymous employee, unique. 
cons, not McDonald's specifically, but the area. There's a lot of rude customers in the area I worked in. In oh. Rolleston. Yeah. Oh, Rolleston, what are you doing with your lives? Oh, there's a crew trainer. That's quite it. Yeah. It, pros oh. are it's cool to work there and got heaps of friends. Cons is it's lame when managers are lame. Yeah, it happens universal, I guess. I feel like that's really unconstructive feedback. Yeah. Lame when managers are lame. Maybe maybe not assessing life based on lameness, I feel like is a good start. Well, it does sound though that a lot of the cons are that it gets really busy and the customers are rude. So I think it's our fault. I haven't been been to McDonald's in a long time, but Oh, it's definitely make... mine. I was there this morning. I got oh, a coffee. I was very polite oh, always. Nice. Maybe it's customers create bad environments for staff. I wonder if that's a thing. What it else? seems to be a quite a common okay, thing. What, what is another like food, like what is another service delivery place? That... Not food though. That's oh, what do you think of food? Because there's about... Starbucks. Okay, let's see what the Starbucks. Should we go high ratings or low ratings? Well, Starbucks got 3.6 star average. That's pretty high. What was McDonald's? I think it was 3.5. Okay. So a little bit lower. Okay, let's go with most, this is just, most popular really decent place to work okay competitive pay sense of community with peers good perks it's a very articulate comment Mm. cons lots of churn (laughs) part-time is coming and going so high staff turnover yeah Ooh. okay that's now kind of heading into a not great space that's a two-star review we've got yeah and this one says the boss was not a leader was the title of their comment the pros the flexible hours are good for students but not their well-being interesting cons the boss only cared about themselves and the company and not the staff when people were off sick with a vomiting bug they still forced them to come to work because they were desperate and bribed the staff with KFC. I could be bribed with KFC. Yeah, but KFC could just make the stomach problems worse. <laughs> Mind you, it's good to bribe people with food. I guess a free meal is important. That was only a few months ago. It was September. I yeah. hope Starbucks took that on board. So hours are constantly getting reduced. Lack of staff and can be busy with disgruntled customers. What's getting disgruntled about? It's coffee. Wait times. Oh, touche. People getting your order wrong, getting snarky because they get your name wrong. Please, isn't that the point? I think it's actually why a lot of people go to it's see to what get name, their name. Re- yeah. recreated name. It's like those online things where you press a button and you go, your porn mm-hmm. star name is, your Starbucks name is. Lulu. Do you, do, you any, do you get anything weird when you if you go to Starbucks? I no no I've never had anything weird hmm. I've had my name spelled with a k a couple of times in I K O L A. really Nicola with a k yeah and ch quite often with a ch because that's how you spell Nicholas oh so okay. then I'm like Nichola I'm not a spider do they say, do they then read it as Nichola no they oh, okay. read it as Nicola which oh, okay. is bizarre but anyway funny yeah I kind of now want to go and mumble my name and see what I come up with no, nothing still beats knob hole <laughs> nothing beats knob hole you had a great name <laughs> good times all right what else? okay so let's think about any are there any other businesses you'd be interested to know about oh not off the top of my head um no oh, subway we oh. go to subway a lot you do we once ordered on an app a ham a foot long ham and so when you when you click on it yeah you click based on the protein that you're choosing so you click on ham mm. 12 inch and then you choose the bread etc it mm-hmm. turned up with no ham <laughs> just cheese and bread <laughs> i mean my child doesn't have the most developed taste buds but just imagine ordering a subway with just bread and cheese there must be people who do it but i thought oh come on where's the ham that's pretty bad they've got twenty thousand reviews does good old subway 3.4 they're lower than mcdonald's oh boy what have we got august okay auckland five stars pros good benefits and training programs cons not much career growth for future fair that's fair yeah i like this good first job a sandwich artist i love how they're called a sandwich artist four out of five stars pros super helpful Good first job. Cons, very stressful when it got busy. 
Oh, fair enough. Okay. Anonymous employee. Good if you're a student. Cons, not great to work full time. Oh, okay. Store manager says the pros are it's not a hard job. Cons, uh, find people to work full time shifts. Oh, okay. oh, and then you've got the person just above the saying it's not great yeah. to work full time. Interesting. Are they in the same place? No. <laughs> what does that mean? Full time shifts, like a whole shift of say eight hours, that they find it difficult to find someone to do eight hours, or maybe full time as in forty hours. Interesting. Oh, geez, this one's not ideal. Two stars, October. Also Dunedin. <laughs> oh, Lord almighty. Oh, what is happening? Is it, it's just studentful, though. Free food, good team culture. Well, that's that's a really good start. Cons, bad management, poor pay rate, and rude customers. But that's pretty awesome that you can have a good team culture, even though you've got bad, bad management. management. That means you're making the most of your time at work, hanging out with your mates. Or just, yeah. yeah. My time at Subway. I feel like that is an essay. But it is not. Three stars. My time at Subway. Pros. Friendly staff, management, and work colleagues. Cons. Does get very busy when working night shifts. Advice to management. More people need to be available during shifts. How is this a three-star review? That feels that's like a good, yeah. I feel like that's a five-star. And also my time at Subway is like the start of like war and peace. <laughs> my time at Subway. Your time sounded lovely, dearie. Waikato. Interesting. Okay, what else have we got? Oh, well, Mount Eden, what do you know? What does Mount Eden say, Shannon? Well, this sandwich artist says the pros of working at the Mount Eden uh, subway is great boss. Oh. Lots of things to learn, independent. Amazing. Cons, sometimes stressful. Closing store can often lead to overtime if there is a lot of customers. Makes sense. Yep. And that doesn't yeah. kind of expect that in any retail based job. You can't force My the customer. My first out. job was like a retail based job. Yeah. I used to work in a, like a, um, almost like a mall, like yeah. a shop in a mall. And the guy was absolutely wackadoodle. If he's listening to this, you were absolutely wackadoodle. <laughs> Such a nice guy, though, like really lovely guy, but he was a little loopy. And I remember like the minute, like, because customers were your first thing, yep. right? They're the most important. So having, you know, you're closing up the shop and a customer walks in and you're just like, oh, you, know. you have to see them. It's like, oh my goodness, let me find you the perfect tie for your shirt for a wedding that you're going to tomorrow. Of course I can. Yeah. Yes, I can. let me tie it for you. And then you don't even have to tie it tomorrow. You know, you'd know, almost feel like in a mall, though, that people know that everybody's going to close at the same time. So you try, try, try their luck, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. Um. Oh, okay. This was in May 2023. But they're actually somebody who worked there in 2016. <laughs> I've given them five stars, though. They said in 2016, it was a good place to work. Uh, pros manager at the time was really nice had really good cheese aioli toast <laughs> you could probably buy me with cheese aioli toast to be fair cons there delicious. are no cons it was fine how interesting why have we waited from 2016 to 2023 to leave a review possibly oh, so didn't know glassdoor existed then did you know glass no existed? i learned that today <laughs> did you think we were going to be talking about glass doors no no when you sent me the message i presumed it was some sort of terminology that business people knew about uh and then when you said it to me just now at my place I thought you were talking about your shower glass door issues which I am <laughs> legitimately having an issue with that is we're true reviewing companies that could replace your shower door and I thought that's great I don't know that I really need to be part of that conversation but, um, I know there's sort of like a 0.5 millimeter line in that stupid glass door oh. but not the same glass door as these reviews <laughs> All right, what else have we got? What else comes up when we click here? Oh, we've got a Walmart. What's a Chipotle? It's food, fast food in the States. Oh, shame. I feel like that would not be a fun time either. Maybe we should go away from people who um, should we service try, foods. Okay, should we try someone mean, like a Deloitte, a PwC, an yeah, EY? Sure. It's not that they're mean. It's just that we know they can be a little tough on their staff. High challenge. Yeah, what is it? Challenging, high expectations. High expectations. Fair? But also in a much different environment to um, fast food. Fast food, yeah. Oh, for sure. Okay, so different we're going choices. in for PwC. I actually know someone that works at PwC. 
Hmm. Yeah, um, really, you know what, have become lovely friends on LinkedIn and is very supportive of the stuff that I do on LinkedIn. Oh, cool. Yeah, very kind. PwC child. Okay, this is just recent, 5th of December, 2023. So they're a consultant. They're still a current employee. Ooh. They say the pros of working at PwC is that good progression, both in terms of skills and salary, Cons, stress, while there is steady progression from intern to partner, actual job training is limited. I managed to get hired in a job I don't have experience in and got no training or help. Mm. I was just expected to know how to do things. Advice to management. You could get more done by Yikes. actually upskilling your juniors. That's fair. Yeah, that is fair. Three stars out of five. It's pretty, it's not too, it's not bad. But what does know. PWC child mean? I wonder if it just means they're a junior. Oh, maybe. Well, this is good. Good people and flexibility. Weak pay. I wouldn't have expected that. I would. Uh, Having uh, worked at Deloitte and EY, uh, I would. Okay. Mm. Pros, people will invest in you. Flexible working. Cons, pay isn't great. Busy season can be brutal. Ooh. Interesting that this person says people will invest in you, but it sounds like the previous person, there wasn't a lot of training. I would no. think investing is training. Same. And this is really recent. This is 11th of December. Mm, but somebody higher up the scale from the looks of it, they're a manager of some sort. Yeah. All right. What does um, that cat say? Oh, we got a cat. I love it. All right. So we've got a two star here from an anonymous employee, former, in Auckland, 2nd of November, so not that long ago. Pros are nice office building and lots of snacks. <laughs> yeah, buy people with food. Ooh, this is right up our alley. Cons, toxic culture due to many senior leaders who are not authentic or genuine. Unfortunately, you soon realize that after starting employment with PwC New Zealand, that they, that the reality doesn't live up to the brutal facade. Beautiful facade. Oh, sorry, beautiful facade. I'm re- I've got brutal in my brain. Yeah. Apparently. Beautiful facade. This results in high turnover across the firm. Advice to management. Actually live up to the firm's values. Treat people well and be genuine. Oh, so high turnover of staff. I wonder what the turnover is. I don't know. All right. Oh, two-star review, 21st of November, Wellington. Oh, it's close to home. Yikes. Pros, fun team, free breakfast yes. slash coffee, good stepping stone. Do you think that means there's good stepping stones within the business or it's a good place to start? No, I'd say it's a good stepping stone ah. to start and then get a better job. Cons, pay, workload, competitive, fast paced. Now, there's no full stops there, so I'm not sure <laughs> if that means yeah. the workload is competitive. Oh, oh. oh, right. Okay. We should have clicked the button first. Oh, yeah. It was now I can bullet see. pointed, essentially. Yeah. So all these things are cons. Yikes. Pay, workload, competitive, and fast paced. That sounds awful. This one's given them four stars. They're an auditor in Auckland. They say the pros are good team spirit all around. Cons, some time with no work. They didn't arrange training. Mm, no, I don't know what that means. People, when you are leaving a review, <laughs> yeah. for the love of sweet heavens, please use some full stops, maybe some punctuation. <laughs> punctuation, maybe even, you know, like Grammarly. Yeah. Grammarly could help. I'm just, you know, spitballing suggestions on how to make your review seem more legitimate. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I feel like this is like a bit of pull over here. Hard to make partner and they were a director, which means the next step would have been what associate director and then partner. Not really sure how that works. It's like a military. So pros are high performing teams and nice people. The cons are difficult to make partner. Not many women. Now, does that mean this is a guy who wishes there were more women in the workplace to hit on? <laughs> or does this mean this is a woman? <laughs> is this a woman who says it's difficult to make partner because they are a woman? Oh, now that's really interesting because PwC. Well, I'm thinking about the directors that I know, and most of them are guys. But I feel like they've got a very strong diversity and inclusiveness. Yeah, I'm not thing. sure. I'm not aware of. Wait, let, let's have a look. I feel like they do. I feel like they've got a really strong one. PwC diversity and inclusion. Okay, let's just do that. Right. I'm always a bit sus when people make it really clear vocally that 
you know, that be diverse and inclusive. Diverse and inclusive. But the reality of actually being in that workplace, like, do they include all levels that need? In the be yourself place? because no one else can. All right, our commitment to diversity and inclusion. Global woman. What does he for she mean? For every guy, there's a female. Interesting. We're also profound commitment to uh, creating a safe, welcoming, inclusive workplace for employees with diverse gender identity, sexual orientation. Every day, our LBQ group shine members shine the light on important issues in society and we work hard to make our culture stronger. I feel like so all of the work is then put on on their LBQ team. Oh, you've got to identify the bad stuff important oh. issues in society so it's literally reliant on the it seems strange that but there are you know anyone can bring shine light on important issues in society i think so but i wonder if that's just poorly written that feels like it's poorly written yeah interesting our staff members benefit from flexible working arrangements great giving them the opportunity and responsibility to excel in a way that best suits them i almost want i almost want to ring someone i know from pw and see, PwC and be like okay so do you like is this a thing <laughs> you know I have this really bad habit of all my friends who work in large corporates businesses like this or in government departments I've got no memory of where they work like you just tell me PwC and I go okay it's one of the big businesses and then I forget about it <laughs> I'm not very good at remembering those it's quite entertaining um all right hold on let's go careers what do we get what do we get what do we get when we join up for PwC? Because I feel like they got free the money. Breakfast. Free breaks is free coffee. Apparently. Um, where does it tell us what our benefits are? Why are there, Why is there no button for benefits? Give us the benefits. We want snacks. I want the snacks. Okay, maybe it's departmental. All right. Lord, okay. We could be here all day looking for jobs. Oh, no. You know what? I'll just press the search button without anything in it. Let's see what it comes up with. You didn't put snacks in? I should have. What if we all search for all jobs with snacks? Uh, what was that one that left director? I can't remember. All right. Oh, yes, the director. Because you said the next step would be something, something, and then partner. Yeah. All right. Uh, I love that they're using te ao, like, uh, te ao Māori in their concepts here. I love this for them. All right. Skills and experience. Sure, cool. Nothing about highlights. Here, oh, we here we go. Highlights of working at PwC. Unrivaled level of access to industry expertise. Okay. Both locally and through our wider global network. I can feel like that. Dress for your day. What does that mean? And flex your mean? schedule in alignment with team and client needs. Well, that will mean if you're not customer facing, you can dress casually. I'd say that's what that means. So dress for your day. So if you've got a day of meetings that are meeting people outside the business, you could be casual. Mm. Inclusive oh, sorry, 18 casual. weeks <laughs> paid parental leave policy for all parents. Okay. Isn't the current 26? Oh, I'm out of date with that one. Sorry. Yeah, same. I'm like, but also why is this? Not everybody is interested in having children. I feel like that's, but that's still a highlight for some sure, people. It is a highlight. Enhanced leave capabilities, an opportunity to purchase additional leave, and two staff recognition days available each year. Paid volunteer days available through PwC Foundation. Digital upskilling through our digital academy. Does that mean you just have to work looking up upskill, but only online? Or is it how to use your computer? Hmm. Seems a bit patronizing. I don't love that. <laughs> oh, you'd think there'd be a few more um well, like where's highlights? free snacks listed yeah I get, or is yeah. that like per site i reckon that'll be per department it's definitely not wellington apparently what um Do you, would it be considered a bit tacky to put that on their website that no, I would be there somewhere free free snacks. <laughs> give me a free meal i'm there like a bee oh, but uh, yeah it probably is quite a bonus yeah. okay, maybe if you're advertising it does that mean people might assume it's the snacks are enough to qualify for a whole meal oh, well they do that at, at Weta where they give them staff meals yeah but Weta sometimes they work for like 45 hours in one day <laughs> <laughs> no sleep no leaving the premises for food uh also a valid point a va valid point we did that episode a couple of weeks ago oh, on okay, Weta yep. where it was it was pretty brutal 
Yeah, I feel like if you're going to give away that much free food, it's partly because you're expecting them not to leave to go <laughs> eat. But anyway, yeah, snacks are good. Yeah, I'm so sad about that that one. Where where were they? Maybe they were Auckland. It is interesting how often free food comes into the bon- the, the benefits, though, isn't it? Free breakfast and coffee. Wellington! Yeah. For the analyst. Free coffee's a big thing in Wellington. I hope it's good coffee. Oh, would it, it be, be? Better be barista coffee. Would it be? Could be. It's possible. Or is it just you're going to find the barista at the work place? We have free at coffee work. at my work, and there's a machine there. It's a full-on barista coffee machine, but I <laughs> have to be the barista. <laughs> Not for everyone else. I just, if I want coffee, I have to make it myself. Is it good coffee, though? Yeah. And we've got an espresso machine, which is amazing coffee. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I say amazing coffee. Thing. People who like coffee like it. Lift me on the cheek. Oh. Um, no, the barista coffee is yum. I can't remember what coffee um, we get. I recognize the label. Caramu. Is it? No, is it the one with the guy with the fez on his head. Is that Caros? Oh, or... uh, Havana? No. No. I feel no, it's all right. Well, we'll figure it out. I know which one you're talking about, though. I, I I can see it in my mind. All right, but you would think working for a big company like that, a big corporate company like that, there'd be more pros than just free food. You think it would be okay, career advantage? Let's, let's now that I have Google's open, let's go with um, what's it? Company of the year to work for. All right, uh, best companies to work for. 2023 yep 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 okay and we'll go just for the first one cisco okay that's not going to help us much we don't know who cisco i know who cisco oh, okay. is it's a like an it company so if we go cisco cisco worldwide bump to bump no <laughs> no <laughs> boo, boo, boo. that was my i'm not giving up my day job as a rapper all right so cisco okay let's have a look here most popular so we've got 23rd of october feb all right we've got customer support technical solutions specialist we've got five star here sometimes unrealistic targets set by people with little local market knowledge okay sounds like a very fair point it's a fair point no one says free food yet please where is that fee free fee food no snacks reward for overachievement so overwork. Mm, I don't know. Maybe that's someone tooting their own horn, but they think they're an over senior partner account manager. Good compensation reward for overachievement. That's that's, that's a weird way to write it. Lots of admin overhead. Constantly bombarded with corporate and business unit messaging. Sometimes lacks cohesion. But he's still going to him five stars. Hey, <laughs> why are they all men in our minds? I, know, I think it might be the boring plain display. Like there's no. Are you saying men are boring with plain displays? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sad. They're about all it. just black and white. There's no. I don't know. There's no. Um... There's no description. No. Okay. Great company. Um, cons. Oh. What's MNC? I don't know. Oh, micro. No. no. So little pedantic and rigid in process at times. Who knows what an MNC is? Something engineering that the engineers think everybody knows. Yeah. I had a virtual start and primarily still virtual. Oh, it's a current employee. Oh, shit. I joined in 2020. But with that said, one, great culture, helpful people. Most people will rely on your messages regardless of how higher up you are. Oh, reply to your messages. I can't read. That is, hand, that is handy. It is annoying when you ask questions and they don't get answered. Benefits. Ultra care 4,000. What is that? Is that like an actual insurance policy? It's like health, health, health insurance, I think. Is that not just Southern Cross for everybody? Oh, it might be. I don't know. It's like Ultra care 4,000. I think it's like the top. <laughs> Enough said. Also, AUS allows you to salary package phone and also get novated car lease that doesn't make sense what's a novated car lease i don't know i don't know either pay rate for a grad great would not recommend but gives them a five-star rating i'm someone doesn't know how to use the app (laughs) lord almighty opportunities to go from the ground up new business at the beginning of its life oh 2020 weird okay it's quite old now it's another 2021 
Yikes. Oh, 2015. I don't have many. These are all New Zealand based. Oh, yeah. that one's not. Oh, this one's San Jose. The grass isn't always greener. No, the grass is green where you water it. True. So it might be green at the neighbor's fence, but that's because he's watering his grass. Yeah. Are you watering your grass? Get back on your grass and water it. Tend to your grass. Don't just jump the fence, you squirrely no, little They did say they waited a year before leaving the company. Before. Oh. oh, there's a whole essay. Oh, I regret pressing the button now. They worked there for three years. When they left, they waited a year before they posted this review. Wow. Networking and now cloud. Okay, cons. Can be a machine. All right. I mean, hang on. Go back to the grass is greener because it sounds like they thought the grass is greener, so they wanted to wait for a year before they decided to make comments about the company they'd left. Mm. Oh. Benefit hey, match. Okay, benefits. Oh, they want to return. I would really like to return. Interesting. If you don't like where you are in Cisco or what you're working on, give it six months because you will likely be reorganized. <laughs> oh, but that's a that's a con. <laughs> While it's sometimes necessarily to realign the company to meet competitive threats or market demands, reorganizing the company once a year is excessive. That's true. That is true. You would be exhausted. Yeah. And stressed, feeling you might lose your job all the time. Change fatigue. Advice to management. Okay. I was part of three different and distinct business units. I enjoyed working for each of them and found I was able to contribute value in every role I had. What was painfully obvious to me was that the company is or was going through a bit of an identity crisis. Consumer versus no customer. So social media versus no social media. AWS like cloud offering or Cisco cloud offering. So that was consumer versus no consumer. Yeah. My advice to the leadership team is this. We, Cisco for Life, are Cisco. We develop the standard for networking, infrastructure, and cloud. We are the industry leaders in our segment. We stand a cut above and make no apologies for it. Own being Cisco. We don't need to compete with Apple, Facebook, Google, and Amazon. We don't chase our competitors. They chase us. And the company replied. Holy shit. How come the company... Is this the first time we've seen them reply? Yeah. McDonald's didn't reply. <laughs> McDonald's doesn't give, like, any shits. <laughs> Thank you so much for a sincere review. We appreciate your feedback and hope you are pleased to see many of our We Are Cisco initiatives. Indeed, it can feel like Cisco frequently changes because it's part of our innovative culture. Mm, that sounds a little toxic to me. Yeah. Oh, innovative. So we're just going to change up our jobs every six months. Maybe it's something that they do less of once they hit their stride. Mm, maybe. We thank you for your time with us and wish you the best. In summary, you're not coming back, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> just reading between the lines. I knew who it was. There's reading between the lines here. Oh, bless their hearts. The paid time off is 20 days per year but you're forced to use three to four days during mandatory holiday shutdown period. Three to four days, that's nothing. Mandatory shutdown oh, periods another in essay. Wellington are often... Oh, yeah, ours are six huge. days. Yeah. And oh. more. Like mm. Some of the companies are closed for like all of January. Damn, girl. Okay, that's a bit ridiculous. Um, they have a lot of unannounced layoffs or restriction. What score was this? Four scores. Or score 98. Advice to management. Don't call the days you're supposed to take during the annual shutdown as paid time off because paid time off implies that there is, it is the employee's benefit. I can see why people get upset about that, but that's pretty standard. Yeah, it is pretty There's standard. There's no point a business continuing to operate at full staff if it's not part of, if, if it's a super quiet time. Mm. Much better to close it all down. Yeah. And the company replied. That's so fascinating. This is very weird. Three weeks ago. When was this posted? Oh. November. November. And they posted almost immediately. Thank you for your candid review and for your six plus years at Cisco. We are happy to learn that you appreciate the culture growth and opportunities and benefits such as Cisco's 
time to give benefit. We value feedback in the pro in the cons and advice to management sections. It helps us continuously evaluate and improve the employee experience. Going back to that um, pay time off, that the definition of pay time off would be a government level. It would be a legal terminology, right? So it wouldn't be that one company would refer to everyone who says pay, pay time off if they have enforced shut down. Surely they're allowed to do that. It's not like if, what if all companies who have shut down would still call it pay time? I wonder what the legal because so many companies do it. Maybe maybe it is a thing that we're not supposed to do. I don't know. It seems so because I know I know the the only thing I know about please in my very limited knowledge is um it's like a per minima so if the law says you are assigned 10 days for sick leave mm -hmm. then you are assigned those 10 days of sick leave you can't assign them to something else right so if the organization for example says to you um you need to use one of those sick days for well-being or a massage day or a mental health day or whatever you can decline because you need your 10 days minimum as per the law right so I wonder because in New Zealand law you get I think three weeks minimum four weeks minimum 20 days minimum I'm not actually sure <laughs> <laughs> it's why I should that's why I've never been on the toxic co work culture workplace podcast before <laughs> Because no, how is it that nothing that you, like, you are just not in the toxic workspace at all? No, see, optometry, often the clinic, clinical staff get a week extra annual leave compared to non-clinical staff. It's like a perk, I suppose. Uh, so a lot of practices I've worked at, I, I just don't remember. I just accept it as the norm and, <laughs> and hope I get extra annual leave at my next pay rise because <laughs> I'd rather have more time off than more money. Yeah. This is phenomenal. This is fascinating. Seeing as though we've spent literally two seasons talking about awful places to work. <laughs> we had one woman on where the woman, the her boss didn't pay her for like a year. Oh my gosh. How can you continue with that? But she kept getting strung along. And then we had one guy, I think it was the um, episode we had last week where the guy um, started and no one knew he'd started. He just showed up at work and someone gave him a laptop and they were like, okay, there we go. And he's like, where's my manager? Like, who's the people? Does anyone know I've started? Crazy. And he was there for like a week before they realized. I had a whole week of induction. So the person who had the job before me would normally give me the week induction, but there wasn't any uh, overlap. And so the person that employed is a locum optometrist for a couple of weeks, months, then would work see all the patients while I observed for a week <laughs> yeah it's insane I feel like this is I'm, it's not a technically difficult job because you've already got the skills because you're already an optometrist so I'm just yeah it's it's fascinating very well supported I feel like we all need to become optometrists is this your plug for becoming an optometrist I do think optometry is a fantastic career <laughs> I think everyone should do it, but not too many of you, because then you'll you'll flood the system, and then my job <laughs> there'll be too many people to replace me, and then yeah, it'll be a toxic job. It will be because we will be fighting for the jobs. Oh, that would be awful. Optometrists fighting for jobs. No. Have you got a shortage in optometry? Uh, uh, in some areas, yes. So, like a lot of situations, is often um, the rural areas don't have access to optometrists there's some situations where as a business expands they could use a part-time optometrist but there aren't any around um there's only people looking for full-time jobs no it's, it's not really a shortage you could you could pretty much if you weren't too picky and where you wanted to work you could have a job pretty quick oh i think the last time i looked at the um one of the uh recruiting emails there were five positions in wellington they were advertised optometrists often stop advertising that they have a role because uh, they advertise for so long and nobody nobody applies. Damn. So yeah, I guess there is a shortage, but uh, it's not necessarily spread around the country evenly. See, now I'm going to go onto the careers website here for a second. Which we're, we're, we're taking a diversion. Uh, careers NZ, and I'm curious to know what the because oh, I feel like we're going to get everybody on this now. On what? On optometry? Yeah. <laughs> It is a great job. It's it's a good job if you like the idea of a medical job, but not the icky stuff oh, like okay. blood. Can we spell even? Yeah, absolutely. Spell it. Um, okay. 
a dispensing optician. It's not quite an optometrist. It's a slightly different. It's, it's optometrist. There we go. Okay. All right. Optometrists, because, you know, I clearly know so much about what you do. Optometrists examine clients' eyes to diagnose and provide solutions for vision problems. They also diagnose, monitor, and manage eye diseases such as cataracts. Is this true? Yes. I don't know that we, I guess we do manage cataracts. Basically, we wait till they're bad enough and then we refer them to someone else to remove the cataracts. Job opportunities. It's got a good Chances of getting a job as an optometrist are good due to shortage of people in the role. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Length of training, five years of training ex, ex, expected or required, I would just say. Do you have to do like a like an internship afterwards? No, but you do a lot of clinical work while you're in the degree. So it's not just an academic degree. So I think it's a whole year. You're just patient-based. Damn, your salary bands are also not sad. So you're coming out of uni one to two years experience and you're earning between 65 and 114k a year i don't know about that because i don't hang out with a lot of new grads and also they're not about to tell me what they earn no is that a new zealand website yes it is okay can i screenshot that <laughs> uh yes you can optometrists with three or more years experience can earn between 114 and 225 thousand dollars a year there was a recent article done by some optometrists um about the pay scale i think that is skewed a little bit by business owners oh. a lot of optometrists are also business owners that makes sense all right i think if you take out the business owners the, that salary band drops significantly well so on this thing it says you can't you can't stuff around so complete your five-year Bachelor of Optometry, be registered with the Optometrist and Dispensing Opticians Board, and hold a current annual practicing certificate. I feel like that's actually quite a lot of boxes to tick. Oh, uh, no, they kind of all come together as soon as you finish your degree. Oh. It's usually just an application, a very short, not short application process, but um, being registered is pretty straightforward. Can and you do like post-grad stuff? You can, yes. You can do Master's and PhD. And it's research and something like specialist. No, you can't really. You can you can do a little special. You can specialize. Um, for instance, there's you could do something called myopia management. So then you can you can just start doing that. Uh, but if you wanted to have specific training, you you can do training in something like orthokeratology. So you can go and do an extra course overseas. Sometimes you can do it. Um, what's it called when you do it online? <laughs> online 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 learning online learning yeah so there, there are different different countries offer different uh training uh options and you can you can and you can uh, touch up and become somebody who can prescribe for glaucoma oh, i wasn't i'm too tired to think about this and I, I was just we were just going to read comments and now you're and now i'm quizzing you about your job <laughs> but because you it's can, so fascinating because it's so not toxic it's well it, it could be it's just it depends what environment you're in, I suppose. Um, there's a lot of pressure in some some businesses and some some uh, business structures are a little bit different. Uh, Do optometrists business. work in the hospitals? Yes. As well? I feel there. like that would be stressful. Yes, that would be stressful, partly because I think a lot of them aren't recognized for their skills and perhaps mm. aren't paid for their skills. And an optometrist who's got a lot of experience, especially one who's worked in the hospital, is worth their weight in gold. And they can cut down the number of staff you need, support staff, they could almost triage for an ophthalmologist. So if you've got a good team going, you can um, really enhance, you can really just, you can get through a lot of patients quickly with really good service and care if you've got an optometrist on your team. So they're really, they're really helpful in the hospital system, but they're not, not always, you're not universally recognized for their value. Okay. That's fascinating. Well, thank you for that. That's I right. feel like we've just done like a tiki tour of Shannon's job. <laughs> Didn't yeah. you want to do your job when you were like two though? Ten. I was ten years of age when I decided I wanted to be an optometrist. Yeah, it's a bit geeky. It's not geeky. It was lucky. It was very lucky to have a very clear path. I wanted to be a rally car driver. How'd that go? I haven't been in a car with you. It did not pan out. But do you still drive like you're a rally car driver? Absolutely not. I am oh. a responsible adult. So are rally car drivers. They're very responsible drivers. They're very skilled. They take safety very importantly. They do take safety importantly. I would be concerned, though, having a pilot with me because they'd be like, left, and I'd be like, oh, and turn right. Oh, okay. It would be so bad. 
I mean, did we just say safety is really importantly? I think we're, we're both quite tired. Maybe, maybe that's not the best. <laughs> safety importantly. They take, they take their safety very importantly. It's a very, <laughs> it it, it's a very important jobs. So much jobsing. Oh, I watched um, a rally driver. Um, he was doing the Isle of Man thingy. Yeah. He was doing the rally car one. And he almost had a car accident Ooh. almost and they were videoing it and I was like oh okay and from the front like from his like box and he's driving and he's you can see on his face he's just focused and his pilot's talking to him and something happens where he hits almost like a pothole and in the car nothing moves but the outside camera looks like he's gonna roll the whole oh, car but he crazy. pulls it back and I was just like um, you you kept saying pilot. I'm thinking I can't remember what the actual word for the person who sits in the. I thought it was a pilot. No, pilot somebody who drives drives a plane. No, a plane. there are also Co-pilot? people. There are also people that drive. Do you know that there are also the people that drive ships home? That's a pilot. I'd say that's a captain. All no, right, maybe no, no, the captain. Lose. The captain is the guy who drives the ship, and then there is a guy called a pilot. Oh, who takes into harbor who brings it into harbour and then he outranks the captain for that Wild time. In the harbor. Is it is it called a pilot driver though or a no, pilot pilot okay hold on let's pilot, have a look um, the co- pilot is it co-driver tug driver no oh, they've got another the, name because they're the person who holds the maps as well ra- a cartographer no really co-driver car. and rally car I should know navigator that's, that's <laughs> a navigator <laughs> Oh, neither of us could pull that. Word no, that there was no. What's that word? Oh my god! Pace. Oh, pace notes. I was like oh, panacea okay. note. <laughs> I was like panacea note. Panacotta. <laughs> oh, no, I was also like, is that a panacotta? Driver's job is to navigate commonly by reading off a set of pace notes to the driver. Girl, can, you're going at pace. Like, how do you know when is a good time to read the notes? Are you reading them constantly? Like, oh shit! Uh, the left. No, Le- left, right. I mean, right now, no, left earlier. I'm so confused. Does the pace note say turn coming and what intensity of turn it is and what obstacles and things like that? But there's also, they do it quite a regular, there's like a, almost a metronome way they say it. It's like a, yeah, because they've, they've driven the course and they sort of have an idea of the, um, okay. the pace. What does a navigator, I feel like that's a stressful job, navigator, sound like in a rally car calling turns in the high stakes world of rally racing the most unique part of rally car racing is if a regular person were to hear the in-car audio of a driver and a co-driver it would seem like they were speaking gibberish so for this example, we have 50 here. Um, so that means before the next uh, no I call, you'll have 50 meters. Um, and then T for me stands for turn, which means you'll change roads from the road that you're currently on. And then a left three. Left obviously means your corner is going to go to the left. And a three is the degree of the corner. Do you feel like that's a toxic job? <laughs> I don't know. I think you'd have to be in such a good um, partnership, your driver and the navigator, that you probably have a few years' experience. It would be an intense job. I don't know if it was toxic. I feel like it would just be solid stress. Yeah, but these people who get a buzz from that sort of thing. How much, do they, how much do they get paid? I think it's based on how much they win. <gasps> oh. Unless they get like a contract and they're sponsored by someone. Look at her, like, I, I find her notes fascinating because her handwriting is a little rubbish. So I find it quite curious that this is what she's reading out. How she keeps track as well. Yeah, like is she moving her finger down the page? I'm very confused at this point. That's interesting though. I should know more. We had um family members who were really big and rally, rally driving when I was growing up. And one of the girls who was, I think, a little bit old, maybe she was a year younger. I can't remember if she was older or younger than me now. Um, She became, she was a navigator, but I think she also, also was a, on her own right, a rally car driver too. My dream was to do the Dakar. 
I don't know another about it. What's the Dakar? The Dakar was the like the one up in the African Horn. So it was the one that kind of crossed the desert and then oh, nice. oh my god, it was huge. It went like from Paris to somewhere, somewhere to Dakar, I think. <laughs> in like Morocco or so. Please, have you met have we met? My geography is terrible. Oh, okay. Terrible. I can't even tell you where it is, but I know that it was up in the top of Africa somewhere. That's all right. That's all you need to know. I like <laughs> how like the it. top of Africa, like I'm standing at the South African stall. Like yeah, at the top, top, the top is in the north. So I think of the top of the country as the north of the country. Yeah, you're accurate. Hmm. Oh well. Yeah. Th- well, thanks for thanks for entertaining our <laughs> um, people this week. My pleasure. Sorry, I wasn't more prepared and couldn't could um, could could extol more the virtues of optometrists. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure it was fine. I, I think we'll live. <laughs> Good. I'm sure there are other podcasts people go to when they want to hear about optometry. Is there? I don't know. There's probably optometry podcasts. Surely. Surely. <laughs> if not, no, you no, can't. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, okay. So Merry Christmas to all of our, our wonderful listeners. We appreciate your listening, your listening this year. And we hope you have an amazing break we're taking a bit of a break as well and we will see you again in the new year this is the last episode i think for this year we might sneak in another one we're not sure let's see how how gina's doing um if we can steal her away from her vacation but other than that we'll see you in the new year and be nice to those workers at subway starbucks and mcdonald's be very kind to those people if there's any takeaways today be kind because apparently we're the rude people we're the toxic ones in other people's work environments yeah that's a milestone yeah all right thank you bye thank you so much for joining us on this episode of let's break up toxic workplace stories if you enjoyed our candid conversations and insights Don't forget to hit that like button, follow us on social media, and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform.